Today we're working with the Yamaha TG500 Tone Generator. Released in late 1992, this is essentially the rack version of the SY85 workstation. Obviously there's no keyboard here, but there's also no sequencer, floppy disk drive, and there's no bevy of continuous sliders to manipulate the parameters. Whereas the SY85 had a pair of stereo outputs, the TG500 only has one stereo output pair, but it does have four additional individual outputs, all on quarter-inch jacks. Both the SY85 and TG500 utilize Yamaha's proprietary second-generation advanced wave memory architecture, but it's the TG500 that sports 64 voice note polyphony. It utilizes two 32-note tone generators and links them together in the same box. The SY85 was limited to only 32 notes of polyphony. Out of the box, there were 384 uneditable presets. 252 of those were individual voices. Four of them were drum kits. And there was 128 performance combos for that voice layering feature. The good news, of course, is that there was 192 user RAM locations for 126 of your own voice edits, two drum kit edits, and 64 performance combo edits so that you can set up multi-patch layering however you want it. This one rack mount synth also has programmable digital filters, including, yes, editable resonance parameters. There's also two DSP effects engines built in with 90 types of effects, including chorus and reverb and a cool Leslie cabinet simulator, but there's also slots available to add up to 2 megabytes of waveform data if 8 megabytes of built-in waveforms aren't enough for you to play with. Today I'm going to turn my attention to installing 1 megabyte of waveform RAM. I purchased two 512 kilobyte non-volatile SYEMB06 chips from Sector 101 over in the UK. And these are brand new chips. They're not used, they're not refurbished, they're brand new. And they got to me in the States in less than a week. Really happy. Now, obviously this is not a new unit. This is used. I got it on eBay. So I'm going to wipe out everything in the user section and reset the factory defaults. If you hold play mode plus utility select plus exit when you power up the unit, you can wipe out the internal memory and it'll also tell you what version of the firmware you have installed. Now, the latest known version of the firmware that I've heard about is 1.20. I have 1.10 installed here, and I'm not sure what the difference is. So if you know, let me know down in the comments. Like many of you, I want to protect my gear from unnecessary rack rash, so I place this thin piece of foam on the WaveStation SR to protect it and the TG500 from potential scratches while removing the synthesizer from the rack case. Yamaha really thought ahead here. They added an access panel on the top of the unit solely for the purpose of adding RAM to the synthesizer. I only have to worry about two screws instead of eight or ten. The RAM chips, of course, come wrapped in anti-static plastic to protect them from static discharge. So prior to unwrapping and handling them, I made sure that I was grounded so that any static electricity I built up in my clothes wasn't going to damage the chips. You'll see here in a moment that the RAM chips go into the unit in only one particular way, so it'll be pretty obvious how they fit in. If you do need assistance along the way, I've got a link in the description to the Sector 101 project blog. They've got a posting on there that explains exactly how to install their modules into the synth, how to initialize the RAM, and also how to move sample dumps via MIDI. Very helpful and I had to reference it many times, especially when it came to menu diving on the TG500. So let's get started. So you know the front of the synth is in this direction off camera. We remove the two screws and the access panel here on the top comes right off. Inside you'll see two identical female connectors waiting for those RAM chips. Each RAM chip has a long and a short side to it, so when you're placing them into the slots, make sure that you are lining them up properly. If you're inserting only one RAM chip into the synthesizer, you want to make sure that you do it here on the far left. A little bit of pressure will put it in there securely, and then of course you use the same procedure to put in the second RAM chip. Once they're seated properly, just put the cover back on, put those screws back in place, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now it's always a good idea to test any equipment that you repair or modify or update 
just to be sure that it works like you expect it to. I got really excited, so I skipped that step, but luckily it worked out this time. I didn't have to troubleshoot anything after the fact. If you've ever been bitten by that excitement bug and immediately reinstalled a piece of equipment to play with it and then found out that you had to go back and troubleshoot it, let me know down in the comments. Oh boy. The next power up after you've installed the RAM chips, the TG500 will give you an interesting message that says, Wave memory changed. You've got to hit exit to continue to get anywhere else. You'll also find that when you press utility, there is an additional menu available. It's the fifth menu called Wave. You hit enter and then edit, and this will give you access to a submenu where you can access the initialize function. Press enter, and then when it asks, are you sure? Press yes, if you're sure. You can be assured that the wave memory has been initialized successfully when you reboot the machine and it no longer greets you with wave memory changed. Everything boots like normal without incident. You're ready to load samples. Returning to the Sector 101 blog tutorial, about halfway down there is a link for a zip file that contains three samples that you can load into the TG500 via MIDI. Sector 101 recommends using C6 software from Electron, but I'll be using SysX Librarian for my Mac. I found that that works well for me, and once I unzip the files, I rename them something convenient so I can easily find them in my SysX Librarian list. So back over to the TG500, I go into Utilities and check out menu number three. This is for MIDI implementation. I want to be sure that the parameters are set up correctly, so it's in Omni mode and it's receiving all MIDI channels. The next thing I'll want to double check is to make sure that there are no filters in the way of the SysX files getting to the TG500, so I make sure that all the filters are off and there's no issue there. The first sample I'm going to transfer over is a rhythmic guitar loop provided by Sector 101. This is just a little bit more than a quarter megabyte in size, but it takes over 17 minutes to move it via system exclusive on MIDI cables to the TG500. You see, MIDI was never intended to move large bits of data quickly. When it was developed in the early 80s, it was meant for things like on-off note events or changing a patch within a bank. The fact that we could move samples around in the 90s via MIDI at all is pretty incredible. But by today's standards, if we had to move gigabytes around over sample MIDI dump on system exclusive, eh, that would be too painful for words. Anyway, when your sample is done, you'll want to hit the uh, confirmation button. It wants you to hit exit to make sure that you know it knows the sample was received. The second sample, of course, loads in the same way. This second sample, which is a drum loop, is quite a bit less than a quarter megabytes, about 155 kilobytes or so, and uh, it took 13 minutes to load over into the TG500. So I won't make you sit through all of that, but just to make sure you understand, once everything has been received, it asks you to confirm by hitting exit, and you're ready to go to the next stage. Now the samples have to be allocated to a user waveform slot. There are 64 user waveform slots in the machine now that we've installed one megabyte of RAM. First thing you'll do is rename the waveform. You can find that in the utility section under the submenu wave. There's an edit option to change the name of the init wave to whatever you like. I changed it to init wave. The next step is to enable the waveform so that you can create new patches with it. A waveform really is just a building block on which the patches are created. So you'll need to assign samples to waveforms. In this case, I'm going to take the guitar loop sample and the drum loop sample and assign them to the same waveform. I'll be splitting the keyboard so the guitar and drums are in different octaves. Once the samples are assigned to different sections of the keyboard split in the waveform, the samples are ready to be played. Go to the Sector 101 blog post linked in the description for all the gritty details on how to do it. Here's what the samples sound like when they're ready to be played.
So how useful is this user waveform RAM feature on the TG500? Well, it depends on what you want to do with it. It's not on a Kai S900. You can't directly sample into the TG500. So if you want to move samples into the waveform RAM, you're going to have to dump it there via system exclusive. It's a very slow process. It's painful, actually. If you want to use third-party samples as a basis for creating waveforms to make your own patches, I think it's a pretty cool feature, actually, even if it's only just one megabyte of RAM. For its time, it was a really useful added feature, but it certainly wasn't something that you could easily use on the fly and be creative with without pre-planning. Now, the TG500 is an excellent synthesizer, even without the upgraded RAM. But for less than $100, I was able to add 64 waveform slots I didn't have before. And I can choose what goes into those waveform slots. So if I can find some third-party sysx files to dump into the TG500, I'll have even more versatility creating brand new waveforms and brand new patches. To be clear, this is not a sponsored video. I purchased these RAM chips from Sector 101 with my own money, and I'm very happy with what I received. Sector 101 also has a blog post tutorial that explains how to install the RAM into the TG500 and how to set up the TG500 to take advantage of the new user waveform RAM installed. So I appreciate that. This video, in fact, is based off of that tutorial. So I highly suggest you check it out. The links are in the description.